This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com slash skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Well, I don't even know where to start with this one. Hey, the, you're going to see something. This this has blown me away. All right, this is plum gut. Uh, water's going to run from like 100 feet to 50 uh, currents up to about four knots. It's one of the toughest places you can fish. We're on Rick's uh, Metal Shark. We've got Jack and Cliff with us. You see those those rigs here. Typical rigs here are three-way bucktailing with heavy sinkers or very heavy individual bucktails. But I'm going to be fishing something I have never fished before. You're watching the first drop I'm making with one of these large flutter spoons. This happens to be a Tony Maha spoon, um, the one that's been out for, I think, a couple of years, the Nichols spoon. Um, mine, this is a 9-inch, 5-ounce spoon, and um, the Nichols is 8 inches, 3 and a half ounces. Uh, let's just watch. All right, 3.2 knots, still 95. Yeah. Yep. Some fish down there, though. Yeah. Oh, wow, he's in right away. Okay. Way to go, Cliff. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to get down there 95 feet with a spoon. Tell it as well. All right, the challenge is you have to fish near the bottom, follow the bottom contour, not get stuck on all the rocks that are down there. Uh, Cliff's got a 14-ounce sinker on his three-way rig, and that is perfectly standard for this fishing, which is why I have zero confidence that I can get this spoon down near the bottom and keep it there. Um, if I can get it near the bottom, I'm supposed to take long sweeps up in the air, drop the spoon down. Uh, you can just watch, see what happens. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We're coming up 73. Lots of fish. Yeah, a lot of fish here. Down at the bottom. Rick never puts a line in this this trip, and you'll he'll be on the wheel the whole time. You'll hear him calling out numbers. He's calling out depths and drift speeds. It's all fast drifting, generally three three and a half miles an hour. I actually just had one on the spoon, but it was oh, it was it was no thanks to my technique. I can tell you that. Yeah, I think he's just over 19 inches. I think he's a Rick keeper. You want to bring him around to the bow? No, I'll. Yeah. You know, for all I know, it's a, it's a, a blue. I'll, I'm getting him. Where's our net? You know what it is? It's sculpted out at the beginning of the, I, I wouldn't worry about that. Sculpted out at the beginning of the drift. Alright. And then, uh... Yeah, that's what I was... When the spoons or the bucktails, I was thinking that you sculpt a lot. It's gotta be coming up soon, huh? I just hit the, uh, the swivel, so he's right there. That's a blue. Big bass. Ooh, nice big bass. bass. Wow. Big ass bass. That is a big fish. That's an over slot. Come on, Ricky. No, it's it's the it's the spoon. Yeah. The spoon is caught on there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Wow. I don't think the spoons work, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, Look at that thing. Shit. Wow. Look at the size of that fish. I think that probably is over slot. Oh, it's way over slot. Wow, that is a big fish. That must be in the close to 30.
Yeah, I don't think he's 30, but uh, you know what? He's uh, the, the fish that have been caught here recently generally are topping out around 15 pounds. There's a few bigger. Uh, this is way above average for, for yeah, what's been go. caught here. He's good. Good? Yeah. Right. We came out here the other day, every fish in the slot. We didn't get one that big. Yeah, it was funny. I, I felt like I just wasn't, uh, I didn't know what the hell was going on, so I started reeling the spoon up. And that's when it got out, right? <laughs> then it started bending, yeah. So you have a, a white one on there? Yeah, it's a nine inch, it's a Tony Maha. Oh, so it's different than these? It's not a Nichols. Okay. Oh, those are nice though, yeah. This is uh It's a Nichols, right? Yeah, well yeah. that's the one. That's the, that's the standard, yeah. Oh, okay. All the other, the, the other. How much was that one that you got there? 26. Can you uh, yell a number once in a while? Yeah, Sorry, sure, I can look no up. I'm 87. <laughs> and there's some fish down there. Yeah, a lot of fish down there. So, you, uh, Cliff, you're three weighing, you correct? Okay, so there's bottom. So I did get down there. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, All right, his bottom again. Yeah, it's just, you know. All right. And oh, yeah, I hooked him back in the, like, the 60s. And I'm on. Not big, not, could be, it feels like a bluefish. 72, 70, 629, coming up. Yeah. It's a nice striper. I'm not sold on these spoons. <laughs> you, you, people need to be using Skinner Bucktails, not Tony Maha spoons. I'm good. All right, I guess I'll make another drift with it. I don't, I don't understand the physics at all. The only thing I can understand is maybe it gets going and then yeah. it just keeps going. I mean, that's to me, it gets get down in three, three knots of current and 90 feet of water. No way, it's no way. That's why I told Halkius the other day, I said, this, this is stupid. It's impossible, you think? It's five ounce spoon now, yeah, but thing. still. You told me you fixed out the gun in 80 feet of water. No way. You're already you're in the pipe or something. Right, I'm using 30 pound braid, and that rod, that's the Skinner Fluke rod, and it's awesome in here. Um, it handles the big fish no trouble. It, even when we three weigh, it handles the extra weight. Um, there's an 80 pound leader. It's probably like four or five feet long on the bottom, and that's because it, it's it's rough down there. You know, you could definitely lose a lot of gear here in Plum Gut. So I'm watching that line very carefully on the drop. I'm looking for it to slack. That indicates to me um, mostly. I'm just happy to detect bottom because I'm finding that to be the hardest part. But also when it stops, it could be a fish. Oh, I got whacked. Oh. That's the first time I've felt the hit. Oh, oh. Whoa, right, John. It's another good one, too. Oh. It'll be a while. Just, just fish. Besides that, it doesn't matter if they drop off or not. This guy's going to probably be over. Boy, that's the first time I felt a, a hit. Turn it a little bit. 
bit. Oh, look at that bounce. Are, are you using a Skinner rod? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. You're catching all those big fish on the Skinner rod, huh? Yeah, the Skinner fluke rod is now the Skinner bass rod. Yeah. And we'll, in the fall will be the Skinner blackfish rod. Yeah. Another big wow. bass. Another big boy. My goodness. Uh, You'll see Rick do something here with the boat that's very important. He puts it in reverse, stops the boat. Um, many people know this, but not everybody realizes it. This is just so important so that your lines aren't scoping out behind the boat at the beginning of the drift. All right, now I found bottom. Good. All right, you'll see me take an occasional crank here because we are drifting uh, up a slope. And uh, if I find bottom, we're going up the slope. I have to be careful not to hang bottom. Fish on. Fish on. Another good one. Jones got the good spot in the boat. Mine might be, well, I was saying it was coming up, but everything, you know, everything's been good so far, so. No, it's a nice bass. Oh, yeah? Yeah, really good. Wow, look at him take the... Yeah, no, he woke up now. It w originally, he uh, came right up to the top, but... But he's, wow. uh, I'd say he's the second biggest one I've had on. Wow. Why don't you don't break that light rod then? Um, you know, the thing is I can't use any of this video because I'm putting myself out of bucktail business here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Trying to sell bucktails, showing everybody the spoons work better. Yeah, well maybe you got to come up with a John Skinner spoon. Get out of your way. I'm not, you're not in my way. Oh, whatever, I'm anyway. I'll just but yeah, this fish very deceptive. A big one here, sir. Big one. Come on over here on my other side. Help lift up the net. Look at, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Holy. It's a mama Luca. A mama Luca. Holy moly. Look at that. That rod brings up such a huge fish. Yeah, at least I can still sell the rod. <laughs> Bucktails, I'm not so sure about. Oh. Wow. Good job with a little tiny freshwater bass thing. Wow. Whoa. Holy crap. Wow. Holy crap. Well, I got to tell you, this has been the most impressed I've <laughs> maybe ever been with a lure. Wow. Holy crap! I've never seen a lure do like really? this. And here, and, and again, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never used it before. Right, right. Well, the other guys on the boat, Jack keeps trying all different things. Let's just stick it with the bucktail. And. Uh, Okay, so I'm dropping down here, and uh, if you watch the line carefully, right above my hand, what you're going to see, and what I'm watching for, is for slack to to appear, and that's going to indicate that I hit the bottom, and that's the hardest part of this, is just to know when you hit bottom, especially hard when you're moving fast. Okay, there's the bottom. I'll tell you, just getting, figuring out where the hell the bottom is, is like, it really is. Well, now we're going to 3.6. 70 feet, lots of fish. Right at the bottom. Yeah, oh, Cliff had, might have had them oh, there. Oh, you had a hit, Cliff? No, I got the hit. Get 
<laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, Jack, it's not easy. Right. That's why I ended up... I got him. It's another really good one. Uh, I might have to, yeah. Yeah. What's that? All right, so it's just a matter of getting that net out of the way in case. He's learning how to fish. And he's using his rod, too. I would say in the 30s. You know, 30 pounder. Are you good there, right? Uh, but he's, he's, he's getting some nice big fish. Yeah. This one, he's bringing up one right now. It's a monster. It is. Like every trip, he's in, he's hooked up. <laughs> ready? No, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Now I'm ready. It's unbelievable. I can't. I can't even. I, this is. This is the most amazing thing I've seen in a very long time. It's like I feel like I'm fishing with live bunker. All right, despite the rocky and rising bottom that's notorious for stealing gear here, I lost, uh, I didn't lose any spoons on this trip. Um, I did hang bottom four times. Twice I just pulled it out immediately. Twice we did run up current, and what I ended up pulling back was uh, other people's rigs that were on the bottom, but didn't lose any spoons. I am, yeah. On this drift, I am. It, it's just, you know. You know what? If if I that first one didn't grab me on that first drift, I would have taken this thing off. Because this is where the fish are. So get ready, boys. Yeah, oh, I missed them. Me too. Another good one. Oh, man. This this one's just not not moving. Yeah, I mean I'm using 30, so I can't, you know. Man, I got the other ones up nice. Big kick. Coming up now a little bit. I think I'm going to have cliff reel him in the rest of the way. Maybe it's just a pound. I don't think so. Uh, 
Should have got Halkius's net. If it fit a body in there. Getting some line now. I'll tell you one thing, my arm actually is tired. Okay, I saw some color. Yeah, I know. Come on. Whoa. Holy. I don't know. I think this one's bigger. And on and on this went. And thank you so much to Rick for, he didn't even fish. He stayed on the wheel, just put us on the fish as he often does. Um, all right, there's links to all of the gear and especially the spoons in the video description. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Check out my online courses, saltstrong.com Skinner.